What is up, everybody? It is your boy, Nick Noodles, coming at you with another great video. I think I'm going to start making my videos with the mic in hand like this. Let me know if you like it or if I should go back to using the mic arm. Um, also, if you haven't checked out my update video on what's going on with the channel and my life, I highly recommend checking out that video, especially if you are a longtime supporter of the channel and you've been wondering why I've been MIA. So in this video, I wanted to show off the Yashica MF1 camera. Um, this in particular is the Supreme model with the branding on it. If you get the regular one with the non-Supreme branding, it's pretty much the same. And there are a lot of things I like about this camera and there are a lot of things that I dislike about it. Um, we're gonna get into all of that. I'm gonna show you how to set it up and use it. And let's go ahead and get started. So on the front of the camera, you will see a on and off switch for the flash. And in order to power this flash, you need to insert a AA battery at the bottom of the camera. On the top of the camera, you have the shutter button. This controls when you take the picture, as well as an indicator showing how many pictures are left on the film. On the top right, you have this wheel that scrolls, and this gets the film in place to take a picture. Once it is done spinning, um, once you can't rotate it anymore, then you hit the button to take the picture. Once you take all the pictures, there's a button on the side and this releases the back door and then you can access the film. This is how you'll take out a finished roll or put in a new one. Once you're ready to put in a new roll, it will usually come in a plastic container like this. I like to store them in this plastic container after I'm done with it. Um, and you'll notice that a little bit of the film is exposed. This is supposed to be happening when you get it new. On the top, you're gonna wanna set this indicator to be on the letter E. That signifies empty, and I think it tracks up to 36 photos. Um, once you have that done, you're gonna get the film in place, put it on the right side. It will slide up um, into the compartment perfectly. And then you'll notice in the middle of the camera, there's these teeth that I'm pointing at and that is supposed to line up with the little holes in the film. On the left, there's a cylinder, and this has a little notch as well, and you wanna catch that notch onto the film, and you'll notice that there's a crank on the bottom of the film, and um, I flip it out here, and I like to keep a finger on that, that cylinder um, to know that it's caught on, and all you do is just crank that crank until it cannot crank anymore. Um, then you're ready to take pictures. So this can take a little bit of time, but once it stops cranking, um, just flip the crank back down. And to take pictures, you just slide this um, wheel at the top right until it won't slide anymore, and then hit that button on the top to take the picture. So now that you know how to set up the camera, I kind of want to talk about some of the specifications on it, what I think this camera is suited for, and then I want to show you some examples of pictures I took. Now the specifications, and this is directly from the packaging, it is compatible with 35 millimeter film, optimized for an ISO of 400. The shutter speed is 1 120th of a second, aperture is f11, focus range is one meter uh, to infinity. It takes a AA battery for the flash, which you don't need if you're not gonna use the flash. And the battery life of the flash is 120 times, and the flash life, so the amount of times you can use the flash is 3000. Um, so I don't want to go into too much detail about shutter speed, aperture, ISO. You can watch videos that will explain it a lot better than me. Uh, but in short, the aperture is pretty, pretty high, so not a lot of light is going to go into it. It's not going to be the best for portrait shots. You're not going to get that um, bokeh effect where there's like blurriness in the background. I think that's what that's called. And the shutter speed is also pretty high in my opinion. Uh, so you're not going to be able to catch um, a lot of high motion shots. Anything that you're shooting will need to be pretty still. Otherwise, it's going to look pretty blurry. And also, this camera is not going to be very good for indoor shooting, in my opinion. It is best to be outside where there's a lot of light. Now, the camera itself comes with this Yashica uh, ISO 400 film. And I didn't really know that this was in the camera when I got it. So I opened up the camera after I was playing around with it. And um, this was in there. Didn't know about it. So this roll was fucked up. But it is good to have, I guess, because I could use it to show you how to set it up. Um, but any 35 millimeter film is going to work with it. I went to Walmart and got this 35 millimeter film. It's the same ISO as well. I think it's like 18 bucks. Uh, film is a pretty expensive hobby in my opinion, so definitely keep that in mind. Uh, you definitely need to take your time with each shot 
and savor each shot because you don't get an infinite amount of them like you do with a DSLR camera on an SD card. So I hope you guys like those photos. Now I want to talk about some things you should consider if you want to pick up a camera like this. Uh, the first is that film can be pretty expensive to get into. Uh, again, these three rolls cost me 18 bucks, and that is only 108 photos. So you can't be trigger happy when you're taking pictures. I think it's best to take your time um, and spread your rolls out over multiple days and events. I think there's something to be said about taking a bunch of pictures, forgetting about them, and then months later when you get it developed, uh, you can kind of relive those memories. When I got mine developed at a local shop, it was like 22 or $24 to get it processed that day. And it was like an additional $5 if I wanted to add uh, more rolls. This is a cheap camera. There's no way around it. You know, it doesn't take the best pictures. It definitely does give you that film look and that film vibe. There's something to be said about film photos. They honestly look better than digital photos, especially if the photographer knows what they're doing and they have a really good camera. Um, this produces decent pictures for the price. Uh, the build quality is absolute shit on it, though. It's very plasticky. I do like that it has a matte finish, but it just feels like it could break at any moment. The worst part of this camera, honestly, is this crank that you use to wind up the film um, when you're setting it up. It feels like it's going to break when you wind it because there's a little bit of resistance when you're winding up the film. And I don't know why they didn't just make this piece metal. It's plastic. It's held together with like the tiniest pin. I could definitely see this part breaking off, which sucks because like you need this to set up the camera. And without it, you would probably have to jam like a flathead in here and manually twist it, which is not fun. You also can't adjust shutter speed and aperture on it, which are like the two main things that you adjust when you take pictures. So you are a little bit limited on what your pictures are going to look like with this and what kind of shots you can create. But, you know, I really like it. I'm going to use it until it dies on me or breaks. I definitely like that it is reusable and it, you know, doesn't create as much waste. But that pretty much wraps up this video. Let me know any questions that you have about this device because I guess it can be a little bit complicated. I hope you all enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next video.